The Prince of Wands is a really interesting card because it represents Alistair Crowley. You might be surprised to know this, but there's some details on this tarot card that gives the clues. On his breastplate is, is, a, is a logo or a layman, and it says Tomegatherion. Uh, my, my Greek is not very good, but it means the great beast. So we're definitely looking at the site. This, this is really Alistair Crowley. And the description he gives of the characteristics of this card is probably describing himself. But let's, before we go into these things, let's look at more detail of what the card represents. What we have is the Prince of, the Prince of Wands. He's, he's sitting on a chariot, a fiery chariot, uh, pulled by a lion. Uh, the significance of this is that he is the astrological decanus that this card rules is the 21st degree of Cancer, which is a chariot, to the 20th degree of Leo, the lion. So this card is ultimately symbolizing the real relationship between the decanus and the system. Um, above his head is a lion's head um, that, is, that is winged with flames, a uh, curtain of flames arising from them. And around his head, he also has a rays. Uh, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine rays or ten rays coming out of his head. There's more actually. There's like twelve rays of the sun. If that's what you, we can see it as that. In his in his left hand, he's holding the reins of the lion. So he's controlling the lion with his left hand. And on the right hand, he's holding a wand. And this is a phoenix wand. So the second. Add up to the five equals six, which is the the, uh, the wand of power and energy. We see this card also in the three of wands and the five of wands as well. So this is this is this card relates to magical rituals in the golden dawn just as much as anything else. He's the prince of wands is a warrior and he's wearing chainmail, um, but his arms are bare. This is what Crowley says actually in the. Um, uh, in the book, but when you look at the cards, you can see that he's actually naked, and the way his legs, he's, he's sitting down, but his legs, his one leg is folded underneath the other, which is interesting because it kind of represents the the hangman where the leg is crossed over in a, in this position. So there's there's other things that are going on within this card that that we may not be aware of at the time, but it's so much detail. Um, to understand. So this is a card is also transformation as well and ritual. Um, so his, this card is the airy part of fire and the airy part of fire in our chemical terms is a faculty of expanding and volatizing. So we have the expansion is making things happen and volatilize is to make give energy to so this it's a card of enemy energy and dynamism. Now Crowley gives a long list of the qualities of this card. Um, it goes on for quite a while as well, which is which is a more than some of the other cards do, which again represents this, this notion that this is this card really is him. For example, he says the moral qualities appropriate to this, to this figure are swiftness and strength. But he is sometimes inclined to act on impulse, sometimes easily led by external influences, sometimes, especially in trifles, a prey to indecision. He is often violent, especially in the expression of an opinion, but he does not necessarily hold the opinion about which he is so emphatic. It is Joe Crowley's Joker side coming out here, I would think, too. He states a vigorous proposition for the sake of stating it. He is in fact very slow to make up his mind thoroughly on any subject, but always sees both sides of every question. Uh, is that really Crowley? I'm not sure. He is essentially just, but he always feels that justice is not to be attained in the intellectual world. Now, that's an interesting point there. He's clearly talking about the justice or adjustment card at this point. His character is intensely noble and generous. He may be an extravagant boaster, or slyly laughing both at the object of his boast and at himself for making it. He is a romantic, especially in matters of history and tradition, to the point of folly, a reference to the fall, 
and may engineer stunts or play elaborate practical jokes. We're definitely talking about Alistair Crowley here, who's famous for his practical jokes. He might select some inoffensive nobody and pursue him for years with every weapon of ridicule. A swift tormented the unhappy partridge. Um, there's several candidates there for people he may well have um, tormented. Um, a weight comes to mind, and there's, there are no doubt other ones too. His sense of humour is omnivorous and may make him a mysterious figure, dreaded without reason by people who actually know nothing about him. But his name as a symbol of terror. Terrorist Packard, uh, which is uh, related to the Fives as well, and um, it could come into this as well, I think, the Tower too. Um, his modesty knows no bounds, so we go on to his faults here. One of his greatest faults is pride, meanness and pettiness of any kind he holds in infinite scorn. His courage is fanatically strong and his endurance indefatigable. He is always fighting against the odds and always wins in the long, the very long run. This is principally due to his enormous capacity for work, which he exercises for his own sake without lust of the result. Perhaps his haughty contempt for the world at large, which however coexists with profound and ecstatic respect for every man and every woman as a star is responsible for this. Every man and every woman is a star is again as reference to uh, the Book of the Law and the Star Card as well, you see. Well, we also have to look at the bad points of this card and Crowley listens for us too. When this card is badly dignified, the character degenerates. Each of the qualities mentioned above is found in its antithesis. There is great cruelty in him, partly sadistic and partly due to callousness arising from indifference. And in a sense, laziness. So too he may be intolerant, prejudiced and idle. Principally because it saves trouble. He may furthermore be an empty boaster and a great coward. I think Crowley's Joker aspect is coming out there as well, you see. So, is this Crowley? I think it is. Who else would you imagine this to be in your life?